As we enter the second half of our video series, you'll notice that the opening is a little bit different. What has become lately known as the Times Herald block used to be known as the Opera House block, which is shown here in our new opening. The second half of our series brings us back to where we began in video one. The four corners of Port Sharon, Grand River, and Huron Avenue, or in the older days, Butler and Huron Avenue. In our first video, we went uh, north from Grand River, and in the second half, we'll be looking south uh, from Grand River and making a few detours to east and west along the way. So let's start off by taking a left and going east on Grand River toward the river. Which brings us to this location on the northwest corner of Michigan and Grand River. At least what it looked like in 2009. When I was growing up, this is what was here, the Riviere Theater. It was one of five theaters in the immediate downtown area, the other four being the Family, the Majestic, the Ritz, and the Desmond Theater. There was one thing that was quite unique about the Riviera Theater. Hardly anyone bought their popcorn inside the theater. There was a little stand just outside the theater where everybody stopped to have delicious popcorn, and everybody would walk into the theater with the bags of popcorn bought at that stand. This is a picture taken from the video clip you'll see in a few seconds of the stand. For those of you old enough to remember it, I'm sure this will bring back some memories. This film clip is from 1942. Here we're going east on Grand River, just crossing Huron. You can see the river straight ahead. On the right, you have the Kresge building. And on the left there, you can see that blue, that's the Riviera Theater. And the dark maroon there, that's the popcorn stand that we we're talking about. These billboards are just behind the Wolver store. There's that popcorn stand, and then here we come to the Riviera Theater. Pretty blue and yellow combination. Before it was the Riviera Theater, there was another theater called the Bijou Theater. Here you can see a photo of it. Okay, that brings us to the northeast corner of Michigan and Grand River. And here we see the Noten Ice Museum. Before that, it was Spike's Furniture Store. It was there for a lot of years. But it burned down, I think, around 1966. Before Spike's, it was a St. Clair Hotel. One of the many hotels that was on uh, Grand River, or at the time, Butler Street, because of uh, the White Star Dock, where the excursion uh, boats stopped. And we'll look at some of these other hotels in just a minute. Just across the street on the southeast corner where our van used to be stood the jewel of Port Sharon, the Sears store. And when it was the new Sears store, it was all the talk of the town. This was going to be an economy boost for downtown Port Sharon. And uh, we really hadn't seen anything like it in Port Huron. and it would be equivalent of having the mall here today. Uh, it was huge uh, compared to anything else that was retail in Port Huron. They had been located on Military Street uh, before this, in a much smaller store, so this was uh, quite a step for them. Here they are breaking ground for the new Sears store. Before Sears, Kwood Auto Company had their dealership on this corner. Uh, as you can see from this 1936-37 directory. That was there for a lot of years too. I remember going with my father there as a young boy looking for a car. But unfortunately this building also burned down. Prior to the fire, George Yoakum had an auto dealership here as well for a short time. Originally uh, he had the Huron Automotive and Electrical Company over on 4th Street. Then he was here for a short time, and then he moved over to Military Street. This picture shows the uh, Yoakum dealership here. When Kaywoods took it over, they still had this area here that you see in the picture uh, attached to their showroom. And when I went there with my dad, I remember walking through the door out of the showroom into here because they had some used cars there. And it was the difference between night and day. It looked like an old barn, actually a stable, I guess 
because then, uh, while I'm researching this, I found out it was a stable, or I should say a livery. This is where the C.F. Smith livery and sale stable was. Good horses and carriages, furnished traveling agents, rigs of all kind to let night or day. And customers are always promptly attended to. As we go further down Grand River, I'm sure some of us remember what buildings used to be or businesses used to be in certain places. For example, this one here on the left used to be the Goodyear store. That's why it was built. But in the late 1800s, uh, the businesses along uh, Butler Street at that time looked like this. And it was just another part of town. But in the 1900s, it became a focal point for the tourists because that's when the excursion uh, ships start docking at the White Star Dock at the foot of Grand River. And with the tourists coming off the excursion ships onto Grand River, that also attracted businesses to Grand River. Uh, several hotels and almost any kind of business that someone in transit would be interested in. Whether it was a place to get your laundry done or a cafe to eat in or a bar, many hotels uh, to stay over, Grand River had them all. Brown's Bakery was one of those businesses that was located on Grand River or Butler Street. Notice the boardwalk sidewalks here. You notice how wide they are. There was another bakery located on Butler Street as well, and that was Enlick's Bakery. It was located at 112 Butler, which would have been pretty close to the docks. This photo shows the inside of the bakery and the man standing in the suit to the right is John Henlick, the owner. And there's only one thing on the table, it looks like it might be one of their creations of some sort. In the background you can see the baker taking out two loaves of bread. And at that time bread was about four cents a loaf. The amazing thing is that it stayed four cents a loaf for almost ten years from 1890 to 1901. It's like they were pretty successful too, because when the automobiles came out, uh, they have a delivery wagon here. This is the Enlex home, which was located only a couple blocks away from their business on Huron Street. Uh, yes, notice I said Huron Street and not Huron Avenue. At one time there was a Huron Street, and it was right about here. It ran from McMorrin to Quay Street. Uh, parallel to both Merchant Street and Ford Street right in between. This street was later called Claremont Street and then later it was just Snow Street. Businesses just built right over it. And while we're at it, let's look at another street that's no longer there and that's Commercial Street. Uh, that ran right along the St. Clair River the shoreline and it went from McMorrin to Quay. Keep in mind, too, that Quay Street originally went from Huron Avenue all the way to the St. Clair River, hooked up with Commercial Street. So it's difficult to pinpoint where some of those locations would be today because when the blocks change, the numbers change as well. In the five blocks between uh, Huron Avenue and Commercial Street, there was uh, at least six hotels, seven if you count the one in the corner of Huron and the Grand River. One on every block and some blocks had two. This is a messenger hotel that was located on the northwest corner of Commercial Street and Grand River. Of course Commercial Street's not there anymore but this is Grand River looking toward the river and you can see Grand River goes straight uh, toward the river into that parking lot and if you go to the end of the parking lot on the left hand side uh, that'd be about the northwest corner of Commercial Street and Grand River. Here's a much better picture of the hotel. It was probably the nicest hotel on Grand River at the time. It is said that it was one of the best dollar to dollar and a half hotels in the city. Notice in this next picture that we have the same hotel, but now it's called the St. Clair Hotel and Apartments. If you were to talk to a person that lived during that generation, one person might say, oh, I remember the St. Clair Hotel being uh, in the 300 block of Huron Avenue, just north of where Sperry's was. 
Another person might say, no, it was on the corner of Michigan and Grand River. And yet another person might say it was on the corner of Grand River and Commercial Street. And actually, all three people would be correct. After the hotel burnt down on Huron Avenue, it looked like they went to the hotel, the smaller hotel, on the corner of Michigan and Grand River. And then when the larger hotel opened up, they took over the messenger and made that their hotel. So researching businesses a hundred years ago or more uh, can be like a jigsaw puzzle. It can be pretty challenging. Across the street from the Messenger Hotel, uh, on the right-hand side, uh, looking toward the river, was the location of the Tashmu House. Newly furnished and equipped. Everything up to date, rates reasonable. First class bar in connection. I'm not sure in connection with what, but nearest hotel in the city to the White Star Line docks. In this advertisement, you can see that it's uh, previously was called the Elliott House. The same building, a little better picture of it though. I like the way this gal is striking a pose in the doorway there. An attachment house said that it was uh, newly furnished and equipped. It's probably because they want to folks to know that since they took over the Elliott House, uh, they didn't keep their old furnishing, much like the hotels do today. There was also another uh, hotel on uh, Commercial Street called the McGee House. I don't have a picture of this one, but it did say it had a staple attached, so if you brought your horse on the boat, you got some place to put it. In 1859, the Larned House was at this location. This would be the southwest corner of Merchant and Grand River. Here is an old drawing of that hotel. Uh, pretty bad shape, but you can get an idea of what it looked like. So how did the folks on the excursion boat get their luggage to the hotel? I mean, it could have been all the way to the Harrington, which is quite a ways to haul your luggage. Well, they have businesses like this one. Tippenham Baggage Transfer. And this must have been their fast vehicle because it says Express. And I'm sure the town fathers wanted to make a good impression on the tourists, so they had to make sure that Grand River was kept clean. And this is what they cleaned it with. It almost seems like they're out for a Sunday drive. Perhaps on the way home from church they cleaned the streets. All right, let's look at the focal point of Grand River, the foot of Grand River, which would have been the White Star Dock. On this map, you can see that if you went to the foot of Grand River or Butler Street, that's where you see the track going down the middle of the street, uh, and turned left when you got to the river, you would have gone to the White Star Dock. If you were to turn right at the foot of Grand River, then you would have gone to the Ferry Dock, because at that time, the Ferry Dock was on St. Clair River. And if you look at the map closely, you can see the map is designated Steamboat Landing to the north of Grand River and Ferry to the south of Grand River. And while we have the map in front of us, note that Sarnia Street runs the same way as Grand River. It goes all the way from uh, Michigan to Commercial Street. And of course, that street's no longer there either. Looking from the water side, the White Star Dock would have been just south of the municipal building, about where the parking lot is, that you can see here. And from the water side, the White Star Dock would have looked like this. Notice the signage, White Star Line, with a star in the center. Of course, you're looking at it from behind, so it's hard to distinguish, but uh, that's what the folks saw when they got to the White Star Line. That would be the first thing that they would see going through. They didn't have any gates, you just walked underneath it. Of course, the White Star Dock wasn't the attraction. 
the attraction was the beautiful steamers that pulled in, especially the Taj Mahal, which is shown here. This was the queen of the luxury excursion boats. I often wondered how many of these folks were actually uh, passengers and how many were just gawkers. It would have been quite a thrill just to, to be near a boat like that. It was a fairly new boat in the early 1900s. It was built in 1901. Here's a similar uh, photo that's been colored in for a postcard. So let's pull up a chair and sit on the dock for a minute and take a look what transpires in these next few photos. This is the excursion steamer Alpina and the Taj Mahal is sitting in front of it. So they dock two at a time sometimes. Once all the passengers were loaded, uh, the Taj Mahal pulled away from the dock and stopped at uh, Sarnia to pick up any passengers there and then headed back toward Detroit. In our next video, uh, we'll look at the rest of uh, Grand River and then we'll also uh, look at the transitions uh, in the First Ward.